The first step in installing your U-Series load cells is properly preparing your machine frame. Drill and tap the mounting holes on your machine frame based on the dimensions of your specific U-Series. These dimensions can be found on the U-Series datasheet or via drawings for your U-Series load cell. The holes should be directly across from each other to ensure when your roller is installed it is level and parallel to the roller directly before and after it. If the roller isn't aligned with the rest of the machine, it could cause web movement, wrinkling, or baggy edges. Once you have drilled and tapped the holes, make sure you have a clean, flat, and machined surface. If your surface is not clean and flat, you could run the risk of introducing zero drift. For this demonstration, I'll be using Montalvo's U25 load cells. When mounting your load cells, you want to match the direction of the cable with the direction of the resultant force applied to the roller. On my application here, the web will wrap around the roller I'm going to install and down to the roller beneath it and then back up to this roller. Resultant force is the center of the wrap from where the web first contacts the roll to where it makes last contact. So for my application, first contact will be about here and last contact about here, making the center and resultant force in this direction. So I will want to install the load cell so that the cable is going in that same direction. If your direction of resultant force is straight down or straight up, then you can mount the U-series in either direction. The reason for doing this is so that where the load cell is most sensitive, the cable end will see the most force applied to it. To help with this, use the label along the side of the load cell. The label indicates the direction force should be applied across the axis of the load cell. As you can see, it points in the direction of the cable. Make sure your load cell is centered and insert the bolts and lightly tighten. Then fully tighten down the bolts in an alternating pattern, following the pattern a couple of times to ensure the load cell is properly secured. Once both load cells are installed, it's time to either install your pillow block bearings or the entirely assembled roller and bearings depending on your application. If installing an assembled roller, make sure the set screws are loosened on one of the bearings so you can properly line up the bearings with the bearing mounting holes on the load cells. The U-Series load cells bearing mounting holes are drilled and tapped to your specifications prior to shipment so your bearing should perfectly align to the load cells. A critical note when installing your U-Series is to check the depth of the bolts you will be using to secure the bearing to the load cell. The bolt should not be able to come into contact with the bottom of the hole as this is the load cells beam. Check the overall depth to ensure you will be able to properly secure the bearing without bottoming out. You can see here from my brief thumb test that my bolt depth is okay. If your bolt depth is not okay, use a shorter bolt. When installing your bearings and roller, make sure everything is in a relaxed state, meaning there are no external forces acting on the roller in any direction. Center the bearings over the tapped holes and then lightly tighten down the bolts in unison on each of your bearings. This just helps to ensure everything is tightened uniformly. Then in another alternating pattern, fully tighten down the bolts. Repeat one or two more times to ensure your bearings are properly secured. If not fully secured, you may experience zero drift. After you have aligned your roller, tighten down the set screws and simply connect your load cell cables to the cables going to either your tension controller or amplifier. It is also recommended to remove the set screws from just one of your bearings so that if the shaft warms up and starts to expand, it won't apply stress or side load to the bearing and cause zero drift. If one side is free, it will simply expand through the bearing. Next, let's talk about calibration. Depending on the specific amplifier or tension controller you are connecting your load cells to, there are some minor differences in the calibration process, although the overall steps are the same. It's best to refer to the calibration instructions that came with your controller or amplifier. Here I could potentially be using an A4 or the S4 or one of our 3400 series of controllers such as the X3400. The first step in calibration is to zero the system. 
Make sure there is no material or external forces acting on your roller. Zeroing ensures you are only going to be receiving feedback from the material you are processing and not the roller, the bearings, or any other external forces. Again, follow the specific instructions for this based on the amplifier or controller you are utilizing. Once you've zeroed the system, you will need to hang a known weight to calibrate the system. If using the A4, you need to hang a weight that is 20% of your maximum full scale meaning the tension level you are going to be running, or if running multiple materials, the highest tension level you would run. So for example, if you are running 100 pounds or newtons of tension, then you need to calibrate at 10 pounds or newtons. If you are using either of the controllers, your calibration weight should be at least 25% of your meter scale. So for example, if your meter scale is 0 to 100 pounds or newtons, your calibration weight should be 25 pounds or newtons. After you've hung your weight, rotate the roller in the direction of the weight to remove any friction. Complete the calibration based on your controller or amplifier's calibration instructions. Now that your machine is calibrated, when you remove the calibration weight, you should see the tension displays on your controller return to zero. If not, you are experiencing zero drift and should first try the calibration procedure again to see if that solves the problem. If that doesn't work, check to make sure you have taken the precautions mentioned earlier in installing your load cells. Once everything is properly calibrated, you can start your process. If you are just monitoring tension, make sure everything is tightened down in its proper place and calibrated. Thread your material and hit start. If you are controlling tension, again make sure everything is tightened down in its proper place and calibrated. Then thread your machine, put the controller in manual, start the machine, and adjust output to your torque device until you get your desired tension level and make that your set point. After you have completed that, put the controller in automatic and go through the tuning procedure which can be found in your controller's manual. And that's how to install and calibrate your Montavo U-Series under pillow block load cells.